The Islanders preview show is brought to you by Northwell. When we raise health, we raise everyone. Hockey is back, and the New York Islanders are ready to get back to the postseason. After a disappointing end to last year, the players and the fans know how important it is for this team to have a fantastic start to the year. Hello, everyone. Welcome inside UBS Arena at Belmont Park. I'm Shannon Hogan alongside four-time Stanley Cup champion and our good friend Butch Goring. Islanders, another season of great hockey coming your way. And Butch, I cannot wait until they drop the puck on the 13th for that first home regular season game. I, I am so excited. It's going to be a big year, Shannon. It's the 50th anniversary for the New York Islander organization. And I'm looking forward to seeing this team rebound from, from last year. I know they're a very motivated group. So everybody's going to be ready to go right from the very top with uh, Scott Malkin and John Ledecky all the way down. Yeah, everybody is invested in this organization and the team. And the one word that was trending all the way through training camp with the players was hungry. They are hungry to get back to the postseason. This is a group, for the most part, most of the guys were a part of this team. When they made two consecutive runs to the conference finals, they want to be right back there competing and really a force in the NHL again this year. Well, well, nobody likes to miss the playoffs. I mean, that's where the real hockey begins, the the pressure, if you will, the excitement, and certainly the fans missed it. And the guys, uh, yes, were very disappointed in themselves last year. They had high expectations. They didn't get there. They want to get back to the dance again this year. Someone who has very high expectations now and a lot more money coming into his bank account <laughs> is Matt Barzell, the big news during training camp is that he is signed for eight more years. I love this post, Butchie, on his social media. He's pretty particular about what he puts out there. But this quote really says it all. Never a doubt, eight more on the island. Matt Barzell not only loves this franchise, he likes being here on Long Island, and now he's going to be here for the long, long haul. Well, you know what happens, Shannon, is that a lot of players that come into the into the building and, and, and they never get to see what Long Island's all about. And I was the same way when I played with the LA Kings. I mean, you just don't know how wonderful a place this is. Matt Barzell has learned to make this place his home, and we've seen his, his play. We, we don't have to talk about his talent. We know that he's got lots of talent, but the fact that he wants to be here, he believes in his teammates, he believes in the organization, just speaks volumes for me. And it just sends a message to everybody that's going to be a free agent in the National Hockey League. Hey, this is a great place to play. We are going to win a Stanley Cup. It's a destination for sure. You've got this brand new, fantastic UBS arena. Last year, the first year here, they have a, a top of, of the line training facility. And now they have one of the best forwards in the NHL looking to really continue to make a name for himself. And while there really weren't that many changes, Butchie, when it comes to the players on the ice that you, as the fans, all know and love, the biggest change had to be on the coaching side, and that was Barry Trotz departing from the organization and Lane Lambert taking over as the Islanders' head coach. He was named the head coach on May 16th. He was the Islanders' associate coach from 2018 to 2022, working with Barry Trotz throughout this time, Capitals' assistant coach as well, and the Predators' assistant from 2011 to 2014. 124 points in 283 career NHL games from 1983 to 89. He knows what what it's like to win. I think if you're a player and you feel that your coach cares about you, about what's going on on the ice, uh, how you're playing, uh, I, I just think that it, it can motivate, it can translate onto them. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, I'm, I'm myself and, and I'm not going to change and it's just the way I am, but uh, I am a passionate guy. He's not much of a talker. He's more of a more of a doer. Um, I think he's got a real talent for, you know, putting systems together and, and uh, having guys go out there and execute them. And you know, I'm sure he'll be demanding at, at times, but uh, I think he's got a pretty good pretty good pulse on the guys in the group, and uh, and we do with him as well. So I think it's going to be a pretty good transition. You know, we had him for a few games last year when when Trotsy had to go back home for a little bit. He's passionate. He cares about us. He cares about this team and. More in this uh, season, we're excited to have him back there. One thing about Laner for sure, he's, a, he's an intelligent hockey mind. I think he sees the game extremely well. He knows how to connect with players and he cares. So I think he's, I think he's going to do a great job. I think we're all really excited when uh, we found out he was going to be the next guy for us. I think it's going to be an easy transition and I think with him playing the game, being, in it, being an NHL player and you know going through ups and downs, he's going to be able to relate to us and we have a lot of new young guys coming in and I think it's going to be be good for those guys to have a guy like Wayne in. 
I think everyone's looking forward to, to seeing what he has to, to bring here uh, as the head coach, and, and I, I know he's, he's probably looking forward to, to what he's going to get out of us. It's a one game, one day at a time type of mentality, whether it be a practice day or a game day, and that's all you can focus on is just remain in the present, and um, you know things will take care of itself from there. There was a calm sense in hearing from the players that they kind of know what they're getting into with Lane Lambert. And as we continue to get to know him with more and more interviews, it'll be interesting to see how he's able to really translate what he knows about hockey on the ice, connecting with the players, and also what the fans will pick up. What do you like about Lane? What have you learned about him since he's been with the Islanders? Well, well, well number one is that he, he's taken over a team that he knows extremely well. I mean, he, he was the assistant coach, and he didn't have as much say as he's going to have now. But that's one of the most important elements of, of what's going on is that he's not having to learn everybody's personalities. He already knows. Now the transition is, you know, the strategy, the change in how they play. And as everybody keeps talking about, he's a smart guy, so he understands the game very well. He's been a head coach before, so he's got a team that's very motivated. There's no two ways about that. And he's got a team that had a tough year. And boy, oh boy, taking a team that's first overall and then trying to duplicate that is a difficult task but one that's had a tough time you know they're going to be ready to play so that's a bit of an edge for for lane his uh, the way he just goes about his business he's, he always talks about it, he's learned a lot from barry trotz he's a good person yeah good people is all about what trotz wants and i think that the players know that that's what they're getting in lane lambert as well you've been a player you've been a head coach before as well butch what are some of the challenges even when you know the players when you step in and you're now the guy behind the bench respect that, that's the number one thing. Uh, what you're trying to teach the players is they got to buy. They have to buy into to all of that. And listening to the guys, I think they they respect Lane for for what he brings to the table. As Casey Sezikis mentioned, we got a little bit of him behind the bench, so we kind of understand what what he's all about. But that that's the key thing. Everybody can manage X's and O's and can yell and scream if, if you need to. But do you have the respect? And you heard some of the players talk about he's a former player. He understands the ups and downs, the mistakes that make the emotional ups and downs you have. So I think that's going to be a, an important part of what goes on with the success of this team. Were you a yeller and a screamer? No way. I, I don't have any intensity in my game. Not at all. <laughs> he still likes to yell and scream sometimes. Okay, so most of the players are the same. Islanders fans are going to be familiar with them. The one big change, Alex Romanoff, who the Islanders were able to get in the draft. They didn't pick him up in the draft. It was a trade in the draft with the Montreal Canadiens. And you can see in his 79 games as a defenseman with the Habs last year, 13 points, 144 block shots. He's a guy that likes to lay the body, 227 hits. And time on ice shorthanded, he, he's a guy that the Montreal Canadiens were really looking to. And I think the Islanders will like to be able to use him on the PK as well. I, I, I love this acquisition. Why? Because he's only 22 years old. That to me was really important. Didn't go out and get a 32, 33 year old defenseman stopgap. This guy's going to be around for a long time. He's a physical player. He plays the game hard. He wins one on one battles. He makes an awful lot of good plays out there. He's a good decision maker. He can make passes. I mean, he's going to be a tremendous compliment to Dobson if that works out because they don't have the exact same game. Dauber's got maybe a little more offensive uh, flair to his game, but you need that steady and influence. But they're both young guys. They're both 22 years old. I believe they're born one day apart. I mean, so there could be some great chemistry there. So I, I love this acquisition. It solidifies the top four defensemen on the New York Islanders. We know they had health problems last year. Uh, this could prove to be Lou Lamarillo's best move. All right. I'm excited to see how he works with Dauber as well because the two of them also have good, fun personalities. So I'd like to see them have a little fun out there and also help the Islanders with some wins. We have plenty more to come on our season preview show. Do not go away. Butch Goring is going to stick around as well as we dive into the importance of the Isles core players. That's next. Islander season preview show continues and the Islanders had a rough start last season. An unprecedented 13 game road trip then a spring of COVID cases. So it is no surprise, Butch, their numbers after the All-Star break were significantly better. The defense stepped up, the forwards scored more. That's what they're going to need to start this year off. And I think it starts with the month of October, which means 
Brocktober. Bro absolutely, and, and I think they should put that sign up, that name, Brocktober, on every single stall that the Islanders have because really that's the type of scoring they need. They need to get out of the gate. They cannot stumble like they did last year. Yes, the schedule's a whole lot more favorable, but this guy played with a lot more maturity, a lot more confidence than I'd seen him in any time in his career. He had a career last year, I believe it was 37 goals. He just was a fantastic clutch player. Anders Lee came off of major surgery to one of his legs, and that takes a long time to get yourself in gear, ready to go, and he started to find his game in the second half, and this is the man I think is really going to break out this year. I know the fans are all over me half the time because they say, when is he going to keep scoring? I think this is his year that he's going to find his way. He's going to have so much more opportunities, Shannon, to score from that right wing, that open side of his. Always fun to play. Come down the wing, cut to the middle, and have all that net to shoot at. I'm looking forward to seeing Anthony play on the right wing all season long. He has fun when that happens, uh, and that's yes. also something that we know is well documented. It's on his stick for every game. But how can he find a little more of that consistency, Butch? Because that's been something that's been a struggle for Bo for a while. Well, you know, that, I think that's what it is. And, of course, last year nobody had any consistency and they had, didn't have any kind of confidence. But this is a new position for him, at least at the pro level, playing that right wing. And now he's playing with a centerman that's been red hot. We know what Anders Lee does. So this is, a very, I think, a really confident individual. And he's at the age now where he doesn't have to worry about ice time. He doesn't have to worry about, you know, am I going to make this team? He knows his position. And, of course, his buddy's got lots of money, so he's going to have <laughs> free dinners every single night on the road. He did put that out on social. As we were laughing about Matt Marzell, uh, Bo, Bo was like, all right, a lot of free dinners from him. The two of them, very good friends. Also, uh, one of their good friends is Josh Bailey, and he's one of those key veteran present guys for the New York Islanders. Obviously the longest tenured New York Islander, but you also have some players like Zach Parisi and Kyle Palmieri. They've been there. They've done that, Butch, and they want to continue to be effective and to produce for this team however they can. Kyle Palmieri, especially, you're hoping that he's going to have the type of season that he had the second half once he became a dad last year. Well, well I, I think that goes without saying for almost all the players is, uh, is they had great second halves, but they, they've got to do it for, for 82 games this year. Hey, listen, Bailey, Palmieri, Parise, the window to win a Stanley Cup is closing, and so they're going to be a very motivated group, and the first thing that's got to happen is they've got to get to the playoffs, and they know they're going to play an integral part in the success of the New York Islanders, so this is a group that understands uh, how they have to play, they know their own games, so they're going to be prepared to, uh, to go shift after shift, or in uh, Parise's case, game after game after yeah. game, we know what a great conditioned athlete he's, he is. We saw uh, Paul Mary in the exhibition games. He looks fantastic. And I have no doubt that Josh Bailey will be ready to play. Yeah, you mentioned that the window for the cup is closing. And it's not just them that want to be hoisting Lord Stanley's Cup. The younger players on the team know how important it is, not just for them, but for some of those veteran guys. You know what else is important? Goaltending. I can't believe we haven't talked about that yet. And when you look at the Islanders, they have one of the best one-two punches in the whole NHL with Ilya Sorokin, seven shutouts last year, and Semyon Varlamov also with a strong season. I think they're the best one-two combination in the entire National Hockey League. And I talked to Varley uh, in training camp, and you know, listen, he got off to a rough start. There's no doubt about it. He was hurt. Never really got himself in, in uh, ready to play at the top of his level. And, and the team never played all that well in front of him. So I look forward for Varley to give us that... Uh, Goaltending that we saw two years ago, and uh, and Sorokin, he was fabulous last year. The Islanders' record would have been a lot worse if it had not been for us the way Sorokin played. So. He's just starting to understand the National Hockey League. So these two guys, I think, are going to give the Islanders the kind of goaltending they need to be successful. Certainly, they want uh, to get to the playoffs. That's what it's all about. And don't forget, they're looking down the road at who's playing goal in uh, what's that other team that's just a little ways away. Well, we all know that. So there's a little competition going to be going on all season long.
Okay, one player we haven't talked about yet, but I, I think is a big part of it, and he does so much for the team, but maybe didn't get the point totals that we were hoping for last year was J.G. Pajot. Yes, I, and I think like a lot of players, there were some excuses out there, uh, and certainly J.G. Pajot was one of those guys, and we know how important a hockey player he is to this team. I mean, he takes face-offs, he kills penalties, he plays on the power play, he plays hard, he can even play on the checking line if need be. So this guy eats up an awful lot of ice time. He's got a lot of pride in his game so yes he wants to get to the playoffs again more importantly though he wants to get back to the type of hockey that he knows he can play and of course so do his teammates I think some consistency overall in the league with the schedule and the season and hopefully people will stay healthy this year Butch will help everybody and we certainly hope it helps the New York Islanders great stuff with Butch growing really looking forward to your commentary with Brendan Burke throughout this season Islander season preview show continues up next one on one with Islanders general manager and president Lou Lamorello that's coming your way after a break. Season preview show continues and Isles fans are breathing a little easier after Matt Barzell signed an eight year contract extension on October 4th. It averages more than nine million dollars a year and with money like that responsibility and expectations are rising. We sat down with general manager Lou Lamorello for more. Lou, of course, thank you so much for your time as we are approaching opening night here. I'd like to start with Matt Barzell. I know that's something the fans are always interested in. Why was it so important to you to get that deal done, the extension, before the start of the season? Well, first of all, we knew Matt wanted to stay. Uh, we wanted Matt to stay. And uh, why wait? If it was possible to get done, and if it were to get done, it had to be done before the season started because in my opinion it would have been a distraction uh, so we started speaking uh, you know a lot of part of the summer and uh, fortunately uh, Matt's on the contract for a period of time. Yeah you can tell he's excited about it too when he talks about his pride for this organization. You've mentioned before how you've been pleased with how his two-way game has developed over the last couple of seasons. What do you hope to see more of from Matt Barzell to really catapult him to that next level of player and ultimately help this team to the next step? Well, we, we don't want him to uh, sacrifice his offensive skills by any means, uh, but I think to become a more complete player, to do the things that he's been working on, our coaching staff has been working with him at it, and that's be, becoming conscientious in, uh, in the defensive zone. Uh, you know, 100%, uh, not 70%, 75 uh, And he's been working towards that, and, uh, you know, that's what we hope out of him. You surprised a lot of people at the end of last season parting ways with Barry Trotz. What was it about that decision that made you confident in going with a new voice? And what was it about Lane Lambert that you felt was the right pick for this team? Well, I had an opportunity, soon to observe Lane uh, over the last several years. Uh, and when he did uh, take over the team for a short period of time, I was impressed with uh, the way he handled things and uh, his communication skills with the players. Uh, and unfortunately, sometimes these decisions uh, are not popular, but you have to, in a seat that you have, uh, make the best decision for the organization. You said a couple of times towards the end of last season that there was some potential for some hockey trades. In the end, you tried, you decided to stand pat with you know what you had. What was it about this core that made you confident that this was the group that you wanted to stick with? Well, first of all, we said that we would like to make some changes if we could, uh, but there's always an asterisk with that. To, to make changes and make a trade, it takes two to do so, and also what you're subtracting cannot come out less than what you're adding. Uh, so we were able to, uh, in the defensive situation, to add uh, uh, Alex Romanoff, so we're pleased with that. And we also had tremendous confidence in the group that we had here, uh, and we weren't able to do some things that uh, maybe we looked at. Uh, not any other reason than f fiscal responsibility as far as the big picture going forward. So we're completely uh, comfortable where we're at right now, and. Like always, if there's a hockey trade to be made, we'd certainly make it. One of the comments from several of the guys in talking with them is that they're hungry for this season. They were really disappointed with how last year went. Did you get that feeling from the players in camp leading up to the start of this year and just know that this group's in a good headspace right now? Well, first of all, I'd be extremely disappointed that if anybody was comfortable with the season we had last year and uh, knowing the character 
uh, of this group. Uh, I, I didn't have to look for that or, or think about that. Uh, uh, I felt very comfortable that uh, they know what we have to do. The average age of your defenseman group has dropped quite a bit um, in the off season. What do you like about your decor right now, and how do you see that shaking up? Well, first of all, uh, it's obvious our team is built uh, from the goal out, uh, starting with our goaltenders and our defense. And uh, and you're right, our defense is is not only young but experienced. Uh, and hopefully that will be the foundation to certainly extend through our forwards. Lou, thanks so much for your time. Good luck this season. Thank you, Shane. Thank you. We have to step out for a quick break, but there's more to come on the Islander season preview show as we dive into the excitement around celebrating 50 years of Islanders hockey. Don't go away. Islander season preview show is presented by Northwell Health. When we raise health, we raise everyone. The New York Islanders organization joining the NHL in 1972. Since then, Islanders fans have been supporting this great franchise and we are celebrating the 50th anniversary of this great franchise this year. Decades nights to look forward to there. Also, you're going to have Legends Nights with the Islanders legends that you know and love. Also paying tribute to Clark Gillies and Mike Bossy as well. They'll have their own special nights. And make sure to circle March 21st, Butch Goring Night. He's going to have a special bobblehead as well. I cannot wait to see that. The celebration also not just for fans. The players understand how special this upcoming season will be. The Islander logo, um, the more time you spend here, the more time you get to spend with the, the alumni and the guys who have been here and, and laid the foundation for this, this organization. Um, you just realize how, how proud you are every day pulling that thing on. And the 50th anniversary patch, obviously, it's, it's, a, it's a, another milestone. But um, you know, in, in my eyes and, and I think in my teammates' eyes, we, we kind of try and, and take that pride every time we put the jersey on. I think it's something that, that you feel when you put it on. You feel when, you like I said, you see alumni. You see pictures of them um, holding Stanley Cups. You see the passion in the fans. You know, there's just there's a feeling when you put it on that uh, it's unlike anything else, really. Players saying it's unlike anything else to wear that Islanders crest with pride. And in case you're wondering what's coming up in the next couple of weeks of regular season Islanders hockey, here is a quick sneak peek. We hope to see you here at UBS Arena at Belmont Park, opening things up on the 13th against the Florida Panthers and then another home game against the Ducks. The Sharks coming to town Tuesday the 18th. Uh, the Devils are going to be here on Thursday. That game's over on ESPN Plus, but you can come back to us on MSGSN for a Lightning's away matchup on the 22nd. And remember, we're going to have our pregame show a half an hour before all of these games on MSG Networks. And we're looking forward to you joining us all season long right here on MSG Networks as we're going to bring you exciting Islanders games, exclusive interviews, and behind-the-scenes looks at your favorite NHL team, the New York Islanders. Thank you so much for watching the Islanders preview show brought to you by Northwell. When we raise health, we raise everyone. Looking forward to seeing you guys soon.